this is a nucleotide. As you can see, it consists of three distinct parts. This is the phosphate group, this is the deoxyribose sugar group, and this is the organic base. The organic base can be one of four organic bases. Adenine, guanine, thymine, or cytosine. That looks like a G, but deal with it. A dinucleotide is when two mononucleotides join together with condensation reaction between the deoxyribose group in one molecule to the to the phosphate group in another molecule forming a dinucleotide because there are two of them. A polynucleotide is formed when more of them join together with more condensation reactions. This part is called the phosphate sugar backbone because it's a phosphate group and it's a sugar group. As opposed to its bases, you're probably more familiar with seeing DNA as a double helix or two strands joined together. The way this happens is A, which is adenine, and T, which is thymine, joined together in the middle in molecular forces, namely hydrogen bonds. And there's two hydrogen bonds in between adenine and thymine, and there's three hydrogen bonds in between cytosine and guanine. Having hydrogen bonds between the bases is only one of the reasons why DNA is so adapted to its function. The hydrogen bonds allow the molecule to split down the middle easily as hydrogen bonds are quite weak, which allows DNA replication to take place easily. It's semi-conservative replication and it will come up in chapter 14 or 11. Um, another adaptation is that the molecule is so stable that it can be passed down from generation to generation without being corrupted. A third adaptation is that the phosphate sugar backbone and the double helix shape can protect the genetic information inside it by because that's on the outside and the bases are on the inside.